darkness of the nation. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light on those who live in a land they shine, a light has shown. You have made their gladness greater. You have made their joy in Christ. They rejoice in your presence. And then, as men produce at harvest time, as men are happy when they are dividing the spoils. For the youth that was weaned of him, the bar across his shoulders, the road of his oppressor, this you break us on the day of nature, the world of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Be your spirit. A reading. 
reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Hearing that John had been arrested, Jesus went back to Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he went and settled in Capernaum, a lakeside town on the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali. In this way, the prophecy of Isaiah was to be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, way of the sea on the far side of Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people that lived in darkness has seen a great light on those who dwell in the land and shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that moment, Jesus began his preaching with the message, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. As he was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were making a cast in the lake for with their net, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they left their nets at once and followed him. Going on from there, he saw another pair of brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother, John. They were in their boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. At once, leaving the boat and their father, they followed him. He went round the whole of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing all kinds of diseases and sickness among the people. This, brothers and sisters, is the gospel, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Your friends, if 
they are Christian, or even if they're not, you want them to know how much you love God's Word. Now, why is the Word so important? Well, any communication is important. And many of you have got Facebook and other uh, apps in your uh, telephones or computers which are showing you, reminding you what is important in your life, your family, among your friends. Well, the Bible is similar. You know, the Word of God wasn't written down in the beginning. Families that experienced the power of God in their lives and had the gifts given by God for his discernment how to live their lives, these people would teach their children, who would then teach their children, who would then teach their children. Well, King David took what Moses had authorized to be written down, the first five books of the Bible, as the law of God, and that was the law that the Jews were to keep. Their law was important because that is how they live every day according to God's revelation. As time went on, other stories were gathered, other truths were received from God by revelation. Other experiences were recorded. And it was King David who took Naphtali and Zebulon and Judah and the other twelve tribes to unite them into one country. And he said, we must be united, just as St. Paul says. You have people saying, well, I belong to Apollos. I belong to the party of Peter. I belong to the party of Paul. We all belong to the party of Christ, don't we? We are united. So King David said, we need a constitution to show who we are and what we believe, what makes us special as the people of God. So King David ordered all of his scholars to start writing the words of the Bible down so that the different books could be in one collection. And so from King David, we have this beginning of the Testament, the Old Testament, we call it, of what was the testimony of the faith by witnesses, writing it down. And then the apostles and other evangelists and writers gathered a similar collection of the New Testament. And this was added to be one Bible from Abraham right down to us. And so that is why the Bible is so important. It's our identity. And we live by it. The instructions and the stories that bring us enlightenment, that we have the light of Christ guiding us in our lives. So let us be thankful for this gift that God has given us to unite us and to help us know who we are with our constitution of the Bible. Let us stand now and pray our prayer of faith together, because it is all based on faith. I believe in one God, 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 the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, 
all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten and made for such a the Father, true we hope in his remain, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified by the unconscious body. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to just the living the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now we will bless our servants of the Word of God. Those who read our Word of God at the Masses we have, and we have seven Masses in different languages, just as I saw your Bibles are in different languages. And I will ask those readers and the singers, the uh, uh, cantors of the Responsorial Psalm, to come forward without confusion, come forward for the special blessing at this Mass. Here before the These, our sisters and brothers, are given the great privilege of proclaiming God's word in the assembly. <coughs> Through them, God will speak to his people of the salvation and redemption won for us by the Lord Jesus. So that nourished by his word, the people will grow in love and knowledge of God. You have been called to proclaim the word of God in the assembled community of God's people. And in doing so, you are sharing in the church's mission to preach the good news to all peoples. May God's word be living and active in your lives, that you may worship the living God in spirit and in truth. In proclaiming God's word to others, accept it yourself in obedience to the Holy Spirit. Meditate on it constantly, so that each day you will have a deeper love for the scriptures, and in all you say and do, show forth the world, our Savior Jesus Christ, everlasting God. When Jesus read in the synagogue in Nazareth, he proclaimed the good news of salvation for which he would give up his life. Bless these readers and cantors. As they proclaim your words of life, strengthen their faith that they may read with conviction and boldness and put into practice what they read. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 